All right, the past three videos, I've been exploring this concept of cosmic inflation, of the problems in cosmology and Big Bang cosmology that it tries to solve and the problems it creates, at least in the original formulation of Alan Guth in 1980, and then how we fix this with something we call slow roll inflation. But And all of this has been a fantastic story, but science is more than stories. We need actual predictions and evidence to believe something. And it's here, it's in the last moments of the inflationary event when the universe is only 10 to the minus 35 seconds year, seconds old, it's not years old, it's just young. At the end of this inflation event, Inflation itself does very something very interesting and something very testable. When inflation drives the accelerated expansion of our universe, it does something to the fundamental quantum vibrations of the vacuum. Remember, all quantum fields permeate all of space-time. They're, they're what generate matter and radiation. And they have a fundamental energy to them, a fundamental vibration. So even if you remove all particles and radiation and everything from a box and you have a box of pure vacuum, that vacuum has an energy associated with it. And I like to think of it as like a background hum, a background vibration to the universe itself, to the fundamental vacuum of space-time. And the inflationary event is so dramatic it makes the universe so large in such a short amount of time that it takes those super tiny sub-microscopic vibrations in the quantum field themselves and stretches them out to become merely small. It, it, they're larger than they were before. They're, they're still small from our perspective, they're, but they're 10 to the 26 times larger than they were before. That's big. This sets the scene for the rest of the universe because now instead of having a perfectly flat, homogeneous, boring space time at the end of inflation, you have tiny little bumps and wiggles. You have sl regions with slightly higher density and reaches regions with slightly lower density scattered all over. Then when inflation finally ends in the field that drives inflation, the inflaton decays, it goes away and reheats the universe, decays into the matter and radiation that we all know and love. When though that matter and radiation floods the universe, it finds not a perfectly flat universe. It is flat on average, but there's tiny little bumps and wiggles. There's regions, there's pockets of higher density. Those pockets of higher density have slightly stronger gravitational attraction because there's just a tiny bit higher density. So they will attract some matter, which empties out some regions and builds up these little pockets, which gives them even stronger gravity which gives them even higher density and stronger gravity and higher density and stronger gravity. And then over the course of hundreds of thousands or millions of years, these pockets, these tiny microscopic pockets of slightly higher density grow ever larger. And what we find here is one of the most amazing things we can say in cosmology as if most statements in cosmology weren't amazing enough, we can say that the seeds of large-scale structure, of galaxy clusters, of galaxies themselves, of the cosmic web, of the first stars, of solar systems, of all these pockets of incredibly high density in our modern-day universe, they were seeded here at the end of inflation. And they were seeded by, get this, fundamental vibrations in the quantum fields of nature. These fantastically small fundamental vibrations in the universe itself get enlarged, get stretched out, get inflated to become microscopic, macroscopic, these eventually grow 
over time due to the influence of gravity to become the bumps and wiggles, temperature variations in the cosmic microwave background. That's how we see the first influence of this inflationary event. They go on to grow to become stars and galaxies, high density pockets. And you and me are a high density pocket in the universe. And it started here in inflation and at the end of inflation. And we're pretty sure this story is correct because the kinds of bumps and wiggles that inflation imprints on the universe follow a very specific set of statistics. They're said to be what we call scale invariant, which means there's an equal amount of, of short frequency of small bumps and wiggles versus large bumps and wiggles, and one isn't favored over the other. You get all of them pretty equally. And they're said to be what's called Gaussian, which means that once after this inflation happens, you have some small bumps and wiggles and you have some bigger bumps and wiggles and they evolve pretty much independently without talking to each other. And you let the universe evolve over 300,000 years where these bumps and wiggles grow larger. The contrast in the universe gets larger. Then the cosmic microwave background is generated. It's released. We get to see it so we can see the imprint of this inflationary event in the tiny temperature differences in the cosmic microwave background. And those temperature differences are scale invariant, nearly, and they're Gaussian. This is a prediction of the inflationary model. This is a prediction. Other models of the formation of structure in our universe disagree with observations. The only model left standing is the inflationary kind of model. That said, there's a lot about inflation we don't understand. We don't understand the inflaton, which is supposedly what drove this accelerated expansion. We don't understand the process fully of reheating of how it decayed into matter and radiation. We don't know exactly what set it off. We don't know exactly what the energy scales are, but the broad picture of inflation appears to be correct because it solves some problems in vanilla cosmology and vanilla Big Bang theory. It provides some testable predictions that we have tested, that we have seen. So it appears that something like inflation must have happened that in its most basic form, when the universe was incredibly young, it got very, very large, very, very quickly. That's the basic picture of inflation. And that appears to be correct because that agrees with all observations. What the details are, we're not exactly sure. This is very, very difficult physics, very complicated mathematics that we're still grappling with today. But there it is. There is evidence, direct observational evidence that something like inflation happened because the statistics of the large scale structure that it predicts matches the statistics of the large scale structure that we observe. And if it is correct, it's this amazing, amazing, mind-blowing statement that you and me got our start from quantum fields. How crazy is that? But that's the universe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series on cosmic inflation. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and uh, subscribe. Make sure you're notified. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. I'd really appreciate it. And go to askaspaceman.com if you'd like to listen to the longer, more in-depth podcast episodes on these topics. But either way, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.